Hello and welcome to episode 30 of the How to Survive podcast. This week we're tackling the sober gangster drama Crank, starring Jason Statham. And who's that with me? Is that your Jeff Jellios? <laughs> no, it's Joe Shervel. Hey, Chris. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So, 2006's Crank, starring Jason Statham, Amy Smart, and a plethora of uh, <laughs> ethnic minorities <laughs> in the villainous roles. Yeah. Um, hitman Chev Chelios, played by uh, Jason Statham, is tasked with killing mob boss Don Kim by his employer Carlitos, but has a crisis of conscience and lets him live. Chev then wakes up to find that he's been poisoned by Ricky Verona, a small-time criminal who has teamed up with Carlito following Chelios's failure. Keeping up so far? Once he realises he's been poisoned, Chev Chelios turns to mob doctor Doc Miles to find out what's wrong with him. He says that he's been poisoned with a poison that inhibits adrenaline production, slowing his heart rate and eventually killing him. So Chev needs to keep his flow of adrenaline constant in order to survive. Through his friend Kalo, a transvestite, he finds and kills Ricky Verona's brother. Chelios reveals that he was planning on quitting being a hitman in order to spend more time with his girlfriend, Eve, played by Amy Smart. Kalo is then kidnapped and killed by Carlito's men. Chelios, knowing that he can't be cured, decides to lure both Verona and Carlito to a meeting atop a hotel skyscraper, where he ambushes them with the help of Don Kim and his men. Don Kim is the man he spared earlier uh, in the film. Among the confusion, Verona kills Carlito and attempts to escape in a helicopter. But Chelios climbs aboard and pulls Verona out of the helicopter, falling to the ground alongside him. Chev manages to kill Verona in midair and then decides to use his final moments to phone Eve in order to say goodbye. Chev hits the ground with uh, an almighty crash uh, and then... Seconds later, his eyes open and his heart continues to beat. Uh, and that's how the film ends. Joe, what did you think of the film? Well, Chris, I'm not black, Asian, yeah. <laughs> a woman, yeah. Muslim, homosexual, mm -hmm. uh, a sex worker, healthcare professional, yeah. a police officer, mm -hmm. Buddhist, Hispanic, yeah. or a taxi driver. Or a transvestite. Or a transvestite. So I wasn't personally offended by anything in this film. Um, but yeah. I am over the age of 15. Mm -hmm. So I do have a few problems with it. So what problem... What, let's, let's dive straight into it, Joe. Mm -hmm. What problems did you have with Crank? Uh, what problems could you <laughs> possibly... Go on. This has, this, the skeleton of this film is interesting, right? It's an interesting concept. Yeah. A man is poisoned yeah. and his heart rate can't drop, right? And it hits all the notes that you think of, like oh, he, he has to hurt himself in order to yeah, stay yeah. awake, or he yeah. has to take drugs, or he has to have sex with someone, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, this, this is the clang, right? And I'm sure you're going to agree with me here. Yeah. This, the, the sex attack that, <laughs> that isn't a sex attack, but actually is. Yeah. So they're in, they're in the crowd. Yeah, Chev and Eve, his yeah. girlfriend, are in the crowd in Chinatown, yes. or, you know, yeah. somewhere like that. Um, basically somewhere where there's a lot of, Asian women yeah. around. And um, Chev uh, realises that one way for him to uh, get his adrenaline pumping is to have public sex in front of everyone mm -hmm. um, and tries and fails to convince his girlfriend yeah, basically. initially. Yeah, but he doesn't even try. He doesn't try and it's, not, it's not a negotiation so much. He just starts <laughs> going for it. Yeah, yeah. And she says no. She's hitting him, saying no, uh, this is ridiculous. No, absolutely not. Yeah. And he does it anyway. And that's rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I have no defence to no, offer no, for the film. No. Uh, yeah, that, the same, I had the same thought while watching it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, no, I, I mean, you know, just as yes and then no means no, mm. one should assume that no and then yes also broadly means no. Mm. Uh but even so, a, a later yes doesn't justify, you know, continuing in the face of a, an initial no. I don't think she actually says yes before he's begun. If you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Then I mean, she's, it's, 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 it's kind of like it's the, the the way this scene is dressed I, up. I feel right? I feel like I feel like because we're sat across the table and you've and you've broached the subject with me, mm. I feel like I'm 
you know, tr- trying to defend it. Right. But I, there is no defense for it. No. It's basically rape. It's, but, like... They, it, it's... It's made by people who don't have a clue, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like they, I'm sure they didn't go, oh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll add a scene where um, Jason Statham rapes a girl. <laughs> That'll be great. I think, I think they think it would be funny if she doesn't want to have sex with him, um, and then he does it anyway. Yeah, the power of his dick yeah. makes because her... Because she, she, by the end of it, she is enjoying it. Yeah. And it's kind of like... The, 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 the suggestion there is she didn't want to have sex but she didn't know she, how he good it knew, would be he knew better than her yeah. what, what it was she wanted yeah uh, yeah which is a classic problem I mean if you're I mean the the whole film is is sort of uh, male like wish fulfillment in yes. a way yeah. like you know the, a lot of action films tailor to like you know the male audience who think oh wouldn't it be really cool if I was a really you know uh, a really good killer you yeah. know like i could do all these things really well like drive cars really fast and shoot guns really well and yeah. fight really brilliantly right and girls want to have sex with me whether they like it or not well yeah exactly mm. so that 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 fe- if if you take the whole film to be a sort of male fantasy mm. then this scene is really problematic because it's basically rape yeah it's just and saying you can do what he wants and it's, yeah it's it, i i think to watch this film now I, I've, I've watched it when it came out mm-hmm. when i was but it was 10 years ago. So. Yeah. And I remember thinking it was good. A good film. And now with with the... Because I wasn't at 15 there. Yeah? I'm now yeah. older than 15. Yeah. Um, and it's not it's not a good film. Oh, it's horrible. Um, do, you, it, do you like... I, there are, okay, you, there, are, you, there are redeeming qualities. Yeah. Should we... So, well, no, like, I, I, think, I think basically we, we should just separate that scene. Yes. Because I think, like... I mean, it's, it's it tricky. Does, it doesn't. It, 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 this doesn't excuse it for being there to say no. that the the filmmakers didn't know what they were depicting was yeah. rape, right? Mm-hmm. But okay, if we if we say they didn't know, they didn't intend that as a rape, yeah. it probably makes it worse because yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But let's, let's let's agree, right? That scene is unpleasant, yeah, and is representative of things that are bad with our society. Yeah, I would agree. Now let's talk about the rest of the film. Okay. What is otherwise a perfectly fair representation of both men and women, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, and all ethnicities. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, like, uh, let's take that scene. We'll put it aside. Uh, along with, I mean, let's just assume that we don't condone any of the troubling elements of the film. Right. And there are many, right? And you'd like to think that the directors are putting those in as a sort of, you know, it's a satire of what the male wish fulfillment action film genre likes to depict, mm. right? But I don't believe that there is that satirical element. No, I think they thought this would be fun. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's as much as it, you know. And maybe, you know, in that respect, that's as much thought one should mm. give the film. I've heard an interview with one of the directors. Mm-hmm. Well, so it's directed by the directorial duo of Mark Neville Dean and Brian Taylor. Right. I'm pretty sure the interview I heard was with Brian Taylor. Okay. And it was... He's just a douche. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he comes across as, like, like it's the greatest artistic decision in the world to have women in perspex balls... And he's like, oh, yeah, we really wanted to bring that back for the second film. So why? It, yeah. They, they, if you had that there in order to depict that the characters were misogynist, right? Mm-hmm. Then I could understand it. Yeah. But the the way the camera works with those people in the balls. Yeah, it's lecturous. Like, yeah. It's not, yeah. That's what it's I mean. Like, it's, there's not the yeah. satirical or the, you know, the, the nothing in the film sort of is sending up or uh, criticising those things no it's, it's, it's just going it's saying how great is Chev Chelios and how great yeah. is all these things that are happening yeah it's like women are you know like the, the film will put a naked woman on the screen and it will put a flashy looking car on the screen mm. and those will be equally you know it's desirable yeah, yeah exactly like they're, they're objectified in the same way yeah but like like I said let's just let's just move all of those okay. aside because they are I think we can all agree that there are poor mm. gender racial Ethnic, it's, religious it's possible politics. to oh. it's possible to depict in a film misogyny and racism yeah. in a character yeah. and hold up a mirror to it and say this is this is horrible. Yeah. This doesn't do that. This is misogynist and racist. Yeah. You'd agree with that? Yeah. It's yeah, I, I would. Mm. Uh, does that stop me enjoying the film? 
No. And I think the reason is because it is so brainless a film anyway <laughs> that like I can I can put those things aside. Yeah, right. right. So let's do that. Okay. So like the film has like this, this sort of what I'd say is like a video game aesthetic. Yes. Right. So because it opens with like a first person perspective, like if you've ever played something like Call of Duty, mm-hmm. you've got that first person viewpoint uh, for the first scene. And the ti- even like the titles in the credits are like sort of eight bit and they mm-hmm. like break up. Um, and his rampage through the city is essentially like what anyone who's played Grand Theft Auto yeah. or something like that. It's, it's, it's very reminiscent of that. I wouldn't be at all surprised if that was, you know, like a major influence. You know, let's take one of those like crazy mm-hmm. GTA style rampages and make a film out of it. Like, Even down to how the, the camera moves from scene to scene. It's, yeah, yeah. The, the map is, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, first of all, it's like a top down, like in the original GTA, hmm. but... It can't possibly be influenced by it because it came out ten years earlier. But yeah. in GTA Five, that's how you move between characters. Like, yeah. <laughs> thing. yeah, yeah, and like um, you know, Chev even his his cover story for his girlfriend is that he's a video games programmer. Okay. So like it's you know, it's it's over. I think mm-hmm. it's fair to say, um, and it's like a it's just such a chaotic like manic film mm-hmm. the whole way through. And I'm a big fan of any film that. Uh, the style and the structure of the film matches the plot or, you know, the themes or the content of the film. Right. So, like, it's it's a crazy, like, hyped-up film, like, really fast-paced. Like, there's loads of use of, like, uh, like weird juddering freeze frames when he's, like, screaming in rage and, you know, like, the camera speeds up and he's, mm-hmm. like, sprinting and going in fast motion. There's, like... Uh, Scenes where there's split screen and, you know, you've, we're watching like four different things at once. It's like, it's you know, it's trying to give the impression of being, you know, pumped full of adrenaline yeah, all the way through. Right. Which I think it succeeds in doing that. And uh, I'm, I'm a big fan, you know, of how overblown it is in mm-hmm. its presentation, like the whole way through. Yeah. I like, they did some very interesting things. Like, like we were discussing earlier that... I mean, we're recording this on a Monday and the Oscars was last night. Mm-hmm. I'm breaking the illusion this is a live show. Yeah. Um, and Spotlight won. And I don't necessarily agree that that did anything interesting in filmmaking. Okay. But then this film probably does. Yeah. Because like, they they're, they were telling, the, like you said, they're telling a story about a man who's out of his mind with fear, adrenaline and on drugs. Yeah. And they do that by doing it in a really interesting way. Like the yeah. film's like incoherent in how it's... Yeah, get, yeah. Like, there's one scene where he's running down the road holding the camera and then he hands it off to someone else. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it w- plays with that sort of stuff mm. a lot throughout. Um, I also like it when he's talking to someone and they, they have subtitles and then it gives you the shot from their perspective and you can see the, the subtitles reversed. Exactly, mm. yeah. I, li- I, d- I do like the... Because it's like, you know, this is a problem, you know, that we're, I'm about to say this given the opening discussion mm. we had. But... I think some of the film is quite funny as well. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously supposed to be like a action comedy or, you know, black yeah, yeah. comedy. Um, but I mean, it's all like really low brow or low aim, you know, aims low with all of its humour, but it yeah. is quite funny. And like the, uh, as you say, the, the little subtitles, like when he's in the taxi um, driving, I think to the doctor's place mm. and the guy, and he's like, you know, starting to um, like lose you know, his adrenaline is 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 no longer pumping his heart because he's sat in the back of a taxi, and mm. the taxi driver o- offers him some drugs yeah. and uh, says, uh, "It's Haitian shit, hardcore shit. It's plant shit, mm. right?" And th- each time he says something shit, it comes up in subtitle form. Right. And then there's also the scene where um, I can't remember the context, but Stath- Statham says. Uh, do I look like I've got cunt written on my forehead? Yeah. And the word cunt appears on his forehead as he as he says it. Yeah. And like the, the little touches like that. I like the thing where he realizes what's going on and he sort of reels back and there's like a donkey noise. Yeah. Yeah. And there's is there a bit where he, there's like a light bulb or something? Maybe. There might be. But then there's also someone shouts something in um, in Korean, I think, as yeah. if from the interview, and they subtitle it in. Korean, like just mm. phonetically, they don't yeah. translate it. It's just written as, as it said. Yeah, but like I, I think yeah, it's, it's a shame, you know. But yeah, I think I think that there's a lot, you know, in terms of the structure and the style of the film that mm. is is really creative and enjoyable. Um, obviously, the uh, the point of the you know the narrative is that he has to keep his adrenaline up mm-hmm. at all times. Um, 
I wrote down all the ways that he does that. Okay, go on. Uh, so it's obviously, it's, it's all excitement, fear or danger, yes. basically. Um, so epinephrine, mm-hmm. uh, he takes that because that is like artificial adrenaline. Yeah, the guy from Linkin Park gives him some Yeah, tips, exactly. Uh, he commits crime, mm-hmm. gets in fights, uh, drinks loads of energy drinks, mm-hmm. uh, drives fast and has road rage, steals cars, uh, snorts a load of nasal spray in mm-hmm. a row. Uh, Cooking. Yeah, cocaine. Def- uh, uses a defibrillator on himself. Steals a policeman's um, motorbike. Mm-hmm. Uh, is nude in public, both when he's in the hospital gown and later on when he has sex with his girlfriend in the street. Mm-hmm. Uh, stands on the motorcycle like, um, you know, does a motorcycle stunt, basically. Um, puts his hand in a waffle iron, yeah. uh, causing himself loads of pain. Uh, has loads of shootouts. There's car chases. Uh, he gets road head from his girlfriend, um, Amy Smart, mm-hmm. <laughs> really selling herself short in this yeah. film, really. Um, instigates a gang war, uh, commits mass murder, hangs off the side of a helicopter and has a little bit of unplanned skydiving. Mm-hmm. All in the aid of keeping his adrenaline pumping. That's true. Yeah. That's his primary goal. Secondary goal is to get revenge, right? Well, I mean, we always talk uh, about um, long-term survival mm-hmm. over short-term survival. Unplanned skydiving is an excellent example of yeah. uh, not thinking things through fully, I would no, say. That's yeah. But he knew he was... I mean, he was written off by that point. Yeah. He, he wasn't he, trying to survive. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question for you. Sure. You know, at the beginning, he, he wakes up from his sleep, slumber. Mm-hmm. And there's a DVD next to a television that has fuck you written on it. Mm-hmm. And he puts it on. And that's how he finds out he's been poisoned. And the DVD is recorded in the room he's in. Yeah. Uh, presumably a few hours before. Yeah. Who burned the DVD? Uh, well, further to that, um, at one point the DVD cuts to the scene in the room at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> because he says, he says something like, I'm watching you now. Mm. And Chev looks over his shoulder and he's looking at the camera that we, that we the audience, are watching <laughs> on a DVD. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Listen, I don't, like, we started off with like 10 minutes of quite deep gender politics discussion on yeah. this film. I don't think that the film is intended to be looked at in that way. But, you know... But you, I, I would say it should be before that reason. Right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. If you don't know what you're doing, it's bad. And yeah. I mean, it's, it's a really shallow film. Yeah. Um, but actually, I think that's a good thing. Um, and, like, the, the there are actually, like, hints to, like, his character background. Like, towards the end of the film, he takes, is it adrenaline, I think? And uh, he's stood in a lift. And he's oh, stood right. with a Chinese man, yeah. and then the Chinese man That's... takes various guises, mm-hmm. including his mother. Yeah. And there's, like, a, a hint to, like, um, you know, his backstory. But it doesn't, you know... Like, how many times do we watch films and we, you know, say, oh, why do they have to make this, like, so obvious or, mm. you know, go into this much detail and stuff? This is a film that doesn't do that. It leaves it to the imagination. Yeah, exactly. But enough to... Like, that adds it, to the character. But perhaps that's because the character is so two-dimensional. He's just tough guy. Yeah, I guess so. But, like, y- you can't... You can't say I, one I, film is bad for doing it and no. you know I'm playing devil's advocate to an extent no I understand I, I don't think I wouldn't say that these, these are deep characters or anything no no not neither am I but I, I'm saying that the, the fact that they keep them shallow is good yeah okay fair enough I'd agree with that it's, a, it's like a pantomime more than anything right yeah it's like a yeah, yeah video game <laughs> yeah um, the script is very clearly written for an American person hmm like he uses LA slang like all the time yeah and it just sounds ridiculous in a, a London accent well Jason Statham I think he's he's never done anything other than his own accent has he no regardless of the role because Chev Cherios implies he must be of like Greek yeah exactly uh, or you know some, you know background mm. like first genera- first or second generation Greek yeah and he's he's obviously not he's from London yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he says stuff but like he lives in LA hey look bro like you don't, no one says bro yeah in London yeah is that like Jason Statham I think is fine as like an action film actor yeah and like he carries a lot of action films on his own but any time that he's asked like you say to, to, to 
read lines that don't sound natural mm. in his voice. It just it's so clanging. Yeah, like that. It, he, he does a good job with what is essentially a very flimsy script. Yeah, and you know we read the IMDb stuff. Yeah, before this obviously part of research. It's there's a thing they're saying that he re- didn't want to do the role because he didn't think he was funny enough. And right. they said, well, don't worry about that. You play it straight and we'll let the script be funny for you. Yeah. But I think that's, that's, that is what happens yeah. in the, in yeah, the yeah. film. Like, he's, he's being Mr. Tough Guy. Yeah, like you couldn't have like Nicolas Cage in the role. Like someone who would be funny. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like a, a funny actor. Will Smith. Yeah, like it wouldn't work. Like it's not Deadpool. It can't be like, you know... It is a bit like that. Yeah, but I mean, like, it can't be like turning to the camera. It wouldn't work in the same way. Like, imagine Ryan Reynolds in this film, mm. if he was like wisecracking and stuff, like in the way that. Well, yeah. You know, if, if say Jason Statham is driving at one point and he looks at the camera and goes, "Oh mate, I'm gonna fucking knock someone out in a minute." Oh bloody hell! Yeah, you right? wouldn't be like, "Oh, this is about to get really intense." Oh, yeah. really, watch this. I don't think the film would necessarily suffer for it. No, I guess but not. In the Revenant, if Leo looked at the camera and was like. Hey, I've been. I've, I've walked about ten million miles. I think that at this must. Point. That must be the f- the first time these two films have been like mentioned in the same breath. Yeah. yeah. Um, Joe, have you seen Crank Two High Voltage? Yes. Um, I just want to um, because I don't think we should cover Crank Two High Voltage. Why not? Um, at any point in this podcast, because basically the films are identical. Yeah. Um, but here are some. Plot points that you may have forgotten, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Jeff Chilios uh, survives his fall at the end of Crank. He's, he's literally, the, the second film opens with him being scraped off the street <laughs> and put in a van yeah. uh, where he's fitted with an electronic heart, a do robot know, heart. Do you know what I really like about Crank 2? Go on. Um, he speaks to his girlfriend, Eve, at one point. Yeah. He says, didn't you get the message I left you? Yeah. And the message, because he was skydiving at the time, yeah. is... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, he he. The the plot of the second film is that he's been fitted with a robot heart or an electronic heart, mm-hmm. mechanical heart, I should say, not robot heart, um, which uh, has a battery pack that needs charging, which uh, he destroys in the first scene of the film, um, meaning that he has to constantly electrocute himself in order to keep the charge high, like high enough for him to do whatever it is he wants to achieve mm. during the film. Um, is it another revenge attempt? Pretty much, yeah. Um, Kalo, uh, it turns out, has a brother who appears in Crank High Voltage. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's played by the same actor, who's <laughs> Efren Ramirez, yeah. uh, who, by the way, is Pedro in, uh, in oh, Fire yeah. Dynamite. Of course, yeah. Dynamite. Um, yeah, and uh, Kalo's brother is like a really butch, uh, tattooed, like, action star. Like, ridiculously muscular, like, really funny. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> and Ricky Verona also survives despite having his neck broken, and he survives as a floating head in a fish tank, <laughs> <laughs> but like sentient still. Like he can still move his eyes and like like a future up. Yeah, basically mm. exactly like that. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, the the film is about the film ends with um, the film actually ends with uh, Chev Chelios. Uh, climbing to the top of a power coupling mm-hmm. um, pole and electrocuting himself with that. Uh, and then just before Kalo's brother is killed, Chev Cholos appears uh, and beats the uh, bad guy into sub- submission just with his fists. Uh, but he's on fire yeah. because he's been electrocuted. And then he, uh, the final shot of the film, I think, is he walks towards the camera on fire, giving the middle finger to, to the camera. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Like, yeah. if, if you had any, like, trouble believing that these films aren't taking themselves seriously, then I think that, that proves it. No Crank 3, though. Not yet, Joe, but mm. we can only hope. Because Crank 2 does, in fact, end with... Uh, uh, I think it's like a post credit scene. Um, Doc Miles mm. uh, replaces his heart, his mechanical heart, with a, nor- a human heart. Right. But it appears that Chev Chelios has, uh, has failed to survive the surgery. And then the last shot is a heartbeat and his eyes opening. <laughs> Your I, face. I don't think they're going to make another one. Joe, don't kill my dream. So, Joe, as ever... Uh, it's time to move on to the uh, 
the featured part of our show. The all-important discussion. Yeah, of how to survive. Um, and so, yeah, uh, how would you survive um, the events of Crank? Well, I wouldn't go as big as he does, as fast as he does. Okay. Because I think the first thing he does is drive really fast, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. It's a good little shot of adrenaline. And then shortly after that, he gets like two grams of cocaine mm. and... Snorts it all off the floor. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not a cocaine aficionado, but I think two grams sounds like a lot, right? Mm. It costs him a lot of money, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, so that's, that suggests that this is a lot he's taking in one go. Yeah. Which is a bad idea because that's what his index. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah so just recap what he's in there. So in, in The Martian, Mark Watney is stuck on Mars and all he can eat is potatoes, which nutritionally uh, is probably going to be worse for him in the long term. Yeah. If you eat potatoes all day, every day, you're probably yeah. going to develop all sorts of problems. But it will help him survive in the short to medium term. Exactly. So, so in this sense, yes, uh, cocaine might give you a burst of adrenaline, Yeah. but you also might overdose on cocaine. So my advice is, for, you know, You've been you've drunk during the day before, right? You've sure. had, had beers. Mm-hmm. If you and if you if you know you're going to be drinking all day, you don't drink a bottle of vodka at the start. Yeah, yeah. You, you you pace yourself throughout, knowing that you're going to get a light buzz on, and that'll be enough to see you through until you eventually crash out. In the so you're day. you're suggesting that Chef Chad do the equivalent of have like a couple of beers mm. through that afternoon. Maybe then, a, a, a line of coke here and there. <laughs> yeah, but don't do don't two grams. Want, yeah, like if you're buying two grams as well, why not? you know spread it out over the course of an afternoon like you yeah, said yeah, like, yeah. don't do all two grams at once. I mean he does drop it so maybe that is what he was planning on doing buy more yeah I mean he he the, the thing that he does immediately after that is fight uh, an entire pool bars uh, worth of black guys yeah and he shouts something racist as well right yeah yeah it's crank yeah it's true <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in any case just all these things he does, he does them in like massive bursts, which suggests yeah. there's going to be a big hit and then you slow that down. So like, do, do you think it would, um, like, do you know if you haven't drunk in a while mm. and you, to further your analogy, mm-hmm. like, and then you drink loads really quickly, then yeah. you get more drunk or, you know, like. Yeah, no, tolerance. tolerance yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think his tolerance would, would he should, he should keep that in mind. So he starts small, gets the adrenaline hit, then his tolerance would move up. Sure. You know. But he, he goes full out from the first second. And yeah. that seems like an unsustainable pace. Yeah. Um, I mean, he does sustain it, but mm. not without um, recourse, of course. Yeah. Of course, of I course. mean, well, I, I, I'm taking a sort of similar tact in mm. my suggestion for Chev Chelios, uh, the hitman. Um, Chev is a hitman, mm. uh, as we see in the film, and he murders people for a living, although he had decided to retire. Yes. So, I mean, uh, you're an SEO manager? I work in SEO. You work in SEO, search engine optimization. That's right. Um, I mean, back at the start, when you started SEO work, mm-hmm. right, that would have been, you'd have been buzzing off that, right? You'd have been, like, the adrenaline would have been pumping. You'd have been really excited. Okay, yeah, is that true? Like, you know, you'd be you'd be like, the adrenaline would have been flowing. You'd be like, oh my God, SEO. Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. Oh, this is like, because, you know, you weren't, you weren't the SEO master that you are now. No. Nowadays, right, you're so good at it, you're so adept at it, that your heart rate is going to be lower, you know, there's going to be less adrenaline flowing through your body mm. because you're so practised. You're like the Zen master of SEO, right? Is that fair? Is that fair to say? Is that fair to say, Joe? I, yeah, sure. I am the yeah, Zen yeah. master of SEO, right. yeah. So similarly, Chef Chelios, the yeah. hitman, right? He's a hitman, mm-hmm. uh, although he wants to give up. Uh, Chef Chelios, the hitman. Um, he kills people for a living. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so his heart rate and the amount of adrenaline that he's uh, he's he's going to get mm. from killing people because he's a hitman, he kills people for a living, um, is going to be lower than it would be for say you or I. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, um, a, good, a good comparison would be in in Breaking Bad. By the end of that, Walt um, kills people willy nilly. Yeah. But Jesse, I think in the whole series, it's one person maybe. Yeah, yeah. And that that weighs on him a lot more. Yeah. It gives him an adrenaline spike a lot more than. Exactly, yeah. like Jesse in Breaking Bad would have that that one person that he kills that would have sustained his adrenaline production for mm. for many years. I mean, it, it puts him. It's, it that leads him down a path of <laughs> yeah. more adrenaline because he ends up taking a lot of drugs. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So Jesse, I mean, I don't know if it's in the subtext of Breaking Bad that he's been poisoned with that Chinese yeah, 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 shit, yeah, yeah. as they call it in Crank. <laughs> um, real nasty shit, that Chinese <laughs> shit. Um, 
But Chev Chelios, he's a hitman. Um, he kills people for a living. So yeah. what I would although, say... Although, wait, okay. Right. Since we're doxing each other here, you um, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. uh, you make music videos. Yeah, that's well, yeah, sort of, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, now, if... I don't know if some teeny bopper came along and said, I need a new vi- music video. I just needed, you know, me, me singing in front of a green screen. Sure. I don't want anything on it. I just want a green screen because yeah. I love it. Just me. I want straight one camera, camera A. I don't want any second camera. Right, okay. Just one shot. I want yeah. it. So like a, a very simple video. Yeah. Put music over it and that'll be fine. Yeah. You'd be okay with that. Mm-hmm. But if, say, uh, Mick Jagger came in yeah. and he said, I want to see you, Chris. So Jagger's there and he says, my mate Elton is coming in yeah. uh, with Madonna. Okay. And um, Coldplay are going to be here. Yeah. Are they launching a new streaming service? Yep. Uh, Kanye West, Jay Z. Jay Z's here, and yeah. he says he's put a lot of money on this project, and he's put a lot of faith in you. Yeah. Right. And now Jay Z, you know, years ago it was affiliated with gangs. Yeah. Turns out, right, these gangs are going to kill you if you don't do a very good video. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, then I would have. I would have. The I would have a spike of adrenaline. You're right. Yeah. I, I can see where you're going with this. So it's not. It's not. But, but the difference is here, Joe, mm. is that that would be a very important milestone in my career. Right. Um, and you haven't passed that yet. Yeah. And and Chev Chev Cherios is a hitman. He mm-hmm. kills people with money. Um, he's a hitman. He wouldn't. That wouldn't. Beating up a load of black guys in a in a bar is not the career milestone. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's unfair to say that Chev Chelios beating up a load of black guys <laughs> in a bar is not it's another day the, the same office. career milestone as yeah. it would be if Madonna, Jay-Z, uh, Kanye West, Elton John and Mick Jagger walked into my <laughs> office and said, we want you specifically to make us a music video or we're going to set Jay-Z's alleged gang <laughs> friends yeah. uh, on you to kill you. Yeah. Right? They're, they're not equal things. Maybe if it was like, Chev, we've injected you with the Chinese shit, the real nasty shit, mm. uh, and now you've got to kill all of the world leaders at the G8 summit. Yeah. And you've got an hour to do it. Or say, like, you've got to take on the Khmer Rouge on your own. Yeah. And you're going to be dropped into Cambodia with just a Bowie knife. Yeah, exactly. And you've got to go for it. Yeah. But my point is, mm. and I think this stands up to your cross-examination, uh, all of the things that Chev Chelios do- does in the film appear to come pretty naturally to him. Yes. Given his profession, right? He does a lot of killing people, a lot of driving fast. That's probably involved in mm. hitman training, right? You know, a lot of hand-to-hand combat, mm-hmm. shooting guns, all that sort of thing, right? So rather than doing things which are essentially a busman's holiday to Chev Chelios, <laughs> okay, yeah, a yeah. hitman uh, yeah. who kills people for well, money. Yeah. Day off as well, yeah. Yeah, um... Uh, I would say try and do things that are outside of your comfort zone. Okay. Right. So I've got some suggestions. Um, Stand up comedy. Right. Uh, you were saying J- Jason Statham was worried that he wouldn't be funny enough. Yeah. This would be a real test. That would make the adrenaline pump, I'm have sure. You, have you ever done stand up? No, I haven't. No. I'd imagine I'd be very nervous and the adrenaline would be flying. Well, let's see. Go on. You've got, I've got time in here. You've got 20 seconds to do a stand up set. Uh, and time starts. Um, three, two, one, go. 20 seconds. I mean, geez, I mean, what what is with these airplane f- meals? Oh, God, I can't do it, Joe. It's the adrenaline. It's yeah, just it's, too it's, much. It's too much. <laughs> I'm shaking. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, brain surgery. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, I've, I've never done brain surgery. Chev Chelios, uh, he's a hitman. He's never done brain surgery either. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'd imagine that if he did, tried to do brain surgery, the adrenaline would be pumping. Well, you, d- you don't know his backstory. No, I don't, but there's nothing in the text uh, right, to yeah. say... It, it would be an assumption. Yeah, is it an assumption well, on your part to assume that he isn't a brain surgeon? No, no, we can't, we can't inversely <laughs> assume things. Right. We can't assume all things at all times. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 the, it's the Schrodinger's brain surgeon, right? <laughs> yeah. Until, uh, until we know either way, he would assume both. Um, give, uh, get Chev Chelios, the hitman, to uh, give an unprepared presentation on a topic at university. Mm-hmm. Um, I've done that. I'm yeah. sure you've probably done that. Yeah. Uh, that would get the adrenaline pumping um, in front of a you know room full of your peers and you know possibly some academics. And critics. Maybe they're even experts in the field that you're presenting on. Mm. That would make you even more nervous. Yep. Um, juggling chainsaws. Yeah. I mean, that's probably difficult, isn't it? That's, in terms it's, of survival. It's high cost. Yeah. Yeah. High cost, potentially low reward. Mm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can count the uh, number of times I've juggled chainsaws on the fingers of one hand. Yeah. That's good. 
<laughs> you should nice do it for the stand up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, or tightrope walk. Um, you know, there are obviously a lot of skyscrapers in LA. Yeah. Uh, there's that film, The Walk. Yes. Um, Based on Man on Wire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd imagine the adrenaline would be pumping with that. Yes. Especially if he wasn't practiced at it. No, exactly. If the character played by Joseph Gordon Levitt, who mm. is the tightrope walker, if he had been a hitman his yeah. whole life and then tried to walk across that wire. It would be that much more of a compelling story. Exactly. Yeah. And it would be that much more difficult for him yeah. and he'd have that much more adrenaline. In a way, we shouldn't be impressed by that feat because he was a professional tightrope walker. Yeah. Right? I mean, like right now, our heart rate and mm. our levels of adrenaline pretty low because we are experts yeah, in podcasting. Podcasting. Yeah. Like, you know. But if, say, um, if Chev Chelios was trying to do a podcast. Yeah. Oh, fuck it, Oh, I'm going to do it. Um, oh, welcome to the uh, uh, f- fucking out of survival. Oh, God, I'm going to fucking kill someone in a minute. <laughs> that's what he says, right? Yeah, I think that's a direct quote. Then you did tell him. Yeah, it's fucking me. Oh, I'm going to fucking kill someone in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I like how we just said we're experts in podcasting. <laughs> no, it's fucking talking nonsense. <laughs> uh, do you have any other methods of survival yeah, for Chev Chalos, the hitman? No, importantly, it's not just about getting your heart rate up, which was um, something we almost made a mistake in, because we were mm. originally going to do a video of us trying to keep our heart rates up uh, in various ways, mm. but that isn't actually the point of the film. The point of the film is to keep your adrenaline up, Yeah, right? So, I did a bit of research. You know, I'm SEO Zen master, you know that. So yeah, I, yeah. I used Google. I bet. I bet you were so calm doing this. I know. <laughs> I didn't even bat an eyelid. Um, so, I found some foods that boost your adrenaline. Okay. Uh, coffee, tea, citrus fruits, mm. bananas, chocolate, cocoa, vanilla. Those can all raise epinephrine levels. Okay. So my recommendation is every morning, Chef Chelios, the rest of your life, have a smoothie with um, coffee, fruit, you know, mm. everything I just listed. Okay. Uh, maybe have it for lunch as well, maybe for dinner. If um, my, my concern is that you'd need an awful lot of vanilla to uh, make up the shortfall in adrenaline if, say, two grams of cocaine. But we don't. the thing is, what are the margins? Because all we know is that his... His adrenaline-producing gland yeah. has been inhibited. Yeah. We can assume damage beyond repair so that it's not producing any adrenaline. Mm-hmm. So all you have to do is produce some adrenaline, surely. Yeah, I guess so, until his reserves of adrenaline are... Yeah. But it seems that the, the situation becomes more and more uh, serious as the film goes on. Like Only he because needs to produce he's more. running out of adrenaline. Yeah, but, like, is it is it that, you know, like, like we said, his... Um, threshold for producing adrenaline or you know an amount of adrenaline that he needs rises as the film goes on so like you know he he needs to get a bigger hit each time yeah i assume that's the case so like he'd start off by having you know maybe a macchiato yeah or something and by the end he'd be on like a double espresso he'd be just shoving fistfuls of freeze-dried coffee into his mouth <laughs> yeah like dripping vanilla extract into his eyeballs yeah but it could be that he just needs a minimum amount and a steady flow of it. Maybe it's because he's doing it such big amounts that he's built up a tolerance very yeah, quickly. Yeah. Well, you think in a in in a scene not shown in the film, mm. um, he's drinking loads of coffee. Well, no, bananas. He just eats a banana mm. and he eats 10 bananas and he's multiplying that each time. The only thing that we see Chev Chelios, evidence that Chev Chelios has eaten is yeah. Chinese food in his apartment at the start and some beers. Okay, well... Those aren't listed here, mm. so I can't. So maybe if he adjusted his diet, yeah, the guy Ricky uh, Ricky Verona would have poisoned him at the start, and that DVD would have played that is also a live broadcast. Yeah, and uh, he'd have gone, Jeff Chaos, you've been poisoned. I give you the nasty shit, the real nasty Chinese shit. And then uh, Chef Chaos would have said, "Well, my levels of adrenaline are naturally high because of my diet, so you've embarrassed yourself." Fair enough. Um, Last week, uh, we were talking about net survival. Yes. Again, um, I'm a big fan of talking about net survival. Uh, you know, like... Well, you've got a podcast about it called How to Survive. How to Net Survive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, 
is something that I'm a big fan of. Sure. Okay, thinking about in films. Um, the body count for this film is 25. Wow. Uh, which is, you know, nearly double speed. Mm-hmm. Um, so 25 people wind up dead through Chev's actions, and they're not including Chev himself, because right. obviously he doesn't die, or Ricky Verona, who, as we know, <laughs> some, lives on in the form of a floating head in a fish tank yeah. in uh, Crank 2. Is High he Voltage. able to talk? Or? Uh, I don't believe so, because he is underwater. Right. Um, and he ends up he, he ends up fully dead at the end of Crank 2 High Voltage. Spoilers okay. for Crank 2 High Voltage, by the way. Um, uh, because he, his head gets flung out of his tank where he's connected up to wires into a fountain. So it's not just being underwater that it helps No, you no. Yeah. no. Okay. Well, Don't have that as a method of survival. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so if we're talking net survival here, okay. Joe, yeah. um, isn't it just better if Chev just waits to die in peace? Well, no, because it's how to survive, not... And I think that rule five is you have to try to survive. Okay. Rule five of our podcast rules yeah. that um, help us to... But his, his goal in the end of the film, when he turns up to that hotel, mm. he's not there in order to try and survive, is he? Actually, uh, him waiting where he is actually increases his chances of survival because, as we see from the ending, he doesn't die anyway. That's true. But is, it, is, is it in Crank 2, is it revealed that he had some sort of antidote given to him? Or did they just leave his sister? No, the poison just wore off. Really? Yeah. But he wasn't to know that. He was, I think, he, even no, at the he, end, he was like, I want the antidote. And they were just like laughing at him. Yeah, I know, yeah. but So he was still seeking the antidote. No, but I think he went there knowing that he wasn't going to get an antidote anyway. That's why he invited Don Kim, didn't he? Oh, uh, yeah. True enough, true enough. All right, well, so it, it may or may not have increased his chances of survival to yeah. stay where he was. And just... Wait for death. Yeah. Because he, in doing so, he's taking himself out of the dangerous situations that he puts yeah, himself in true. and trying to survive. You could say the same for... Um, I guess I guess we can't use knowledge that the characters don't have access exactly, to. Yeah, it's an assumption, isn't it? Mm. Um, well, Glass in The Revenant, mm. if he hadn't gone on that rampage of uh, revenge, the same way as Ches Chelios, um, then he, he wouldn't have been, like, Subjected to you know gunshots and, and falling off cliffs and stuff. Yeah, well, he he would have if he'd waited in the camp mm. later on. But that's a different film. It's very much a crank is very much a sequel, an homage to yeah, uh, a remake. Yeah. yeah. So one final thought for me on how to get your adrenaline up. Mm. And as I said, I was googling around this, and um, I came across this little known website called uh, Wiki How uh, that gives oh, f- yeah. five tips on how to. Get your adrenaline up. Okay. Thanks Thanks for emailing in, guys, yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, number one, go to a haunted house. Okay. Haunted houses can often cause, often cause adrenaline rushes for those in attendance. Sure. Um, this can trigger the fight or flight response that releases adrenaline. Okay. Chev seems to be locked into the fight response. Yeah. There's no, no haunted houses in an LA that he goes to. Um, that he goes to or yeah. that he could go to well, there, there may be some he can go to I haven't looked into it All right. but something to bear in mind number two do something that scares you uh, fear can also stimulate the release of adrenaline mm-hmm. facing your fears periodically in safe and controlled situations can provide you with a nice adrenaline rush nice so what um, does he do any of that is he scared of heights do we know is he scared of getting shot or um, well, he stands up on the bike isn't yeah. he yeah and does the the crucifix I suppose mm. is that scary to him I don't know is anything scary to Chev Chelios who knows number three take a risk risk taking on occasion can release adrenaline in the body in addition to causing an adrenaline rush periodically taking small risks is healthy as it encourages you to step out of your comfort zone well, he, he certainly does that. Yeah. yeah I, although it says small risks, and he's taking very big risks. Yeah. So I wonder if it negates it. If he was taking smaller risks, yeah. then so driving without a seatbelt compared with standing up on a moving motorbike. Yeah. Or yeah. putting a wheelie on a BMX instead of a motorbike. Yeah. Number four, try a stimulating computer game. If you're really into a computer or video game, you may get an adrenaline rush. Violent games tend to result in the release of adrenaline. Consider renting or purchasing an action-packed game with a high level of gore and violence. Now, as we said... I mean, his life is essentially yeah, a video exactly. game. A violent one. Yeah. yeah. 
And finally, mm-hmm. watch a scary movie. Okay. Uh, scary movies are by nature designed to make people fearful. If you're bothered by frightening stimuli in a scary movie, this may encourage a flight or fight response. So we're better to find a good source of scary movies, action-packed films, than with the How to Survive podcast. Uh, head over to howtosurviveshow.com and Chev Chelios, you can find a range of films to keep you pumping adrenaline uh, for the rest of your life. They're even sorted by category, so you could look up exactly the sort of scary movie that you want. Yeah, maybe he likes wild animal horror, yeah. or slasher movies, mm. or stuck on a boat. Yeah, me two of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks very much for listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was episode 30 wow. of the How to Survive podcast. An anniversary. Yeah. Uh, so... Thanks again for listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, as ever, if you want to get in touch, the email address is howtosurviveshow at gmail.com mm-hmm. and head over to howtosurviveshow.com for more details. And why not leave us a review? If you enjoyed this episode um, as much as you enjoyed Crank or more, head over now to iTunes. Head over now. Head over now. Just pick up, take your phone. You haven't got a head anyway. Take your phone out your pocket. Search for How to Survive. Click write a review. Five stars. Mm. Job done. It might just get your adrenaline pumping. Exactly. It might just save your life. Exactly. And uh, it's like, as as Jason Statham would say, ah! <laughs> How friggin' awesome was that, huh? That's, that's the line from the film. <laughs> that's the line an, an, an English man says that. All right. An English man. An English gentleman. Dialogue from an English man. How friggin' awesome was that, huh? <laughs> <laughs>